I really enjoyed talking with author and psychiatrist Dan Siegel about the topic of teens and parents butting heads over different conflicts. Think screen time and more. Here's Dan. When you look at all the research on parenting, one of the things to keep in mind is that something called presence, parental presence in the case of parenting, is the most important factor for how our children learn to know what they're feeling, to be aware of what they're thinking, and to actually be able to control their impulse. Now, what is parental presence? It's a space of a parent's mind that allows a parent to soak in what's going on, to reflect inwardly on the meaning of what's going on for their own life. So an inside out approach says, how is this thing, if I'm an parent, affecting me right at this moment? And what does it mean about the way I was parented as a kid? So if I'm being ignored or someone is angry with me or because I'm not giving them more street time, I understand the meaning of setting limits from my own background. So I've made sense of my life. That's number one. So I'm present for the meaning for me. The second aspect of presence is I'm presence is right here. My presence is there for my child's anger. So instead of my child being angry, because I said, you have to stop screen time, you have half an hour for today and they start getting angry. And I, with my whole set of resonating circuits, including the mirror neurons, get angry better. Instead of doing that, there's a space in my mind in which I can hold the anger and not react to it impulsively. So I'm sitting with the anger and even feeling my child's anger at the same time as feeling my own anger in response to their anger. And instead of just getting in the loop of all that, I said, I see that you're angry and I can feel how angry you are. And putting words to it allows us to name it, to tame it. And as I frame the situation now in the sense of there's anger going on because I'm setting limits, my child is looking to me to see how I deal with emotion. When they see that I can be present for the emotion and not reactive to it. So the brain can be in two states, a receptive state or a reactive state of fighting, fleeing, freezing, or fainting. That's reactivity. I having presence can stay receptive, the other state of the brain where I'm open. Now in this interaction, my child sees, wow, she's angry at me. I'm present. I'm staying receptive. I can even say, you're feeling angry. I'm feeling angry. You're angry. And I say, I'm not reactive. I'm just with the emotion, I'm present for it. And this mind sight process of me seeing my mind, seeing my child's mind keeps me out of the loop of behavioral blocking states. And I pull myself out of that automaticity. And this inside out approach of mind sight allows me to say, yeah, I know you like to do screens for five hours a day. So would I, but it's not good for either one of us. And we're not doing it. Let's go for a walk with the dog around the block. Let's go rollerblading. Let's go, you know, read a book together. Let's see. Even better is let's talk to each other, you know? And these ways of connecting, if you raise your child this way, all the research shows allows them to make the transition from childhood to adolescence with a lot more resilience. They go through the adolescent period with a lot more self-understanding and they're going to enter adulthood prepared to have these mindset skills that they will then be able to use for the next generation. So when you do this as a parent or you do this as an adolescent, do this meaning develop presence with meditation, for example, or reflective dialogues that cultivate this self-awareness, what you're doing is you're giving a gift that keeps on giving. It gives a gift to yourself, gives a gift to all those around you, and a gift for the next generation. Thank you for watching this video. We publish new videos every week, so if you enjoy this sort of content, please like and subscribe to the channel.